this lecture is going to be about naming transition metal complexes. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to use the rules given to write the chemical formula and to name a variety of transition metal complexes. The first thing we're going to do is look at the rules for writing the formula of complex ions. So the first rule is that the formula is placed in square brackets with the metal ion written first, followed by the ligands, and the charge is placed outside the brackets. So for example, here's a transition metal complex, TuCl4. It's put in square brackets. The transition metal goes first, then the ligands. We don't put the charge of the transition metal or the ligands within the square brackets, but outside the square brackets you put the overall charge of the ion, which in this case is 1 minus. Now there's a couple of exceptions to this rule, and that is for some very common complexes which are often written without the brackets. So the only examples you're likely to come across are the permanganate ion, which is MnO4 minus. If we were being really spot on, the MnO4 should go in square brackets because that's the complex. However, for permanganate, we often leave it out. And the other one, if we are, we often leave it out in square brackets, it's, is the dichromate ion, Cr2O7 2 minus. However, apart from those exceptions, the complex should go in square brackets and overall charge outside the brackets. Now, in this example, there only is one type of ligand. Say there's more than one type of ligand. Well, the rule in that case is that you give the negative the charged ligands first, followed by the neutral ligands. So for example, in this complex here, so we start off with the transition metal, which is the iron ion, then followed by the negatively charged ions, the negatively charged ligands, which in this case is the hydroxide ion. The negative charge isn't shown within the brackets, but it is there. Then it's followed by the ammonia ion, the ammonia molecule, which of course is neutral. So transition metal, negative ligand, neutral ligand, and then the overall charge outside the brackets. Far more fun, however, is actually naming the complex ion from the formula. And this is more common of the two types of questions in the exam. Now, the rules for naming the complex ions are actually a wee bit mental. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just run through the rules with you then give you a bunch of questions to try and do and that's probably the best way to try and make sense of these rules which do seem, seem slightly bizarre. Okay, so the first rule is that the ligands are named before the metal ion. Remember when you wrote the formula, the metal ion came first, then the ligands, but when you're naming it, you do it the other way around. You name the ligands before the metal ion. Secondly, the ligands are named in alphabetical order, so we don't bother worrying about if they're neutral or the negatively charged ions. Uh, just name the ligands in alphabetical order. Okay? Disregard any effect that having a prefix like uh, dichloro or trichloro has on alphabetical order. Okay? So a bit like we did with uh, hydrocarbons. Now, the names of the ligands are not entirely obvious and you have to learn the names of the ligands. So, if one of your ligands is the Cl-, the chloride ion, we don't call the ligand a chloride ion, we call it a chloro. If it's an oxide ion, the ligand is called oxo. Cyanide, cyano. If it's the oxalate ion, it's oxalato. If it's ammonia, 
it's amine and can you be very careful with this in this case the amine has got a double m unlike an amine you use in organic chemistry which has only got one m if you write out the complex and just put one m in it will definitely be marked wrong so the ligand amine must have a double m if the ligand is water we call it aqua if it's the nitrite ion it's nitrito and finally it's the carbon monoxide ligand it's called the carbonyl ligand okay so you have to know the names of those ligands okay this is where it gets a bit bizarre the overall complex may be neutral, it may be positively charged, or it may be negatively charged. If it's negatively charged, then we change the name of the end of the name of the complex to end in eight. Now the complex name always name ends with the name of the transition metal. So for example, nickel. So if it's positively charged, it will end in nickel. If it's neutral, it will end in nickel. But if it's negatively charged, we change the name to nickel 8. And then for a few metals, to make it even more strange, we change the name of the metal to its Latin name. Only when it's negatively charged, the overall complex. So for example, if the transition metal is iron and the overall complex has got a negative charge, it's something, 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 ferrate. If it's copper, then it's something, something, cuprate. And if it's tin, it will be something, something, stannate. So they're the only three that you need to know. For other ones like manganese, it'd be just be manganate. Nickel would be nickelate, cobalt would be cobaltate, but these three would change to the Latin versions. And finally, the very last thing we do, the name of the complex, is put in the oxidation number of the metal ion, and we put it in Roman numerals. So if it's plus two, we put in the Roman numeral for two. Okay, so there are the four rules. They're a wee bit strange. Probably the best way now is to tie a few examples. Do these one at a time uh, and then we'll look at the answers. Okay, so here's the first one. Pause the tape, try and name it, and then look at the answer and move on to the next one. Okay, so we start off by naming the ligand. It's a halogen, it's a bromide ion, so that's called bromo. And there's four of them, so it's going to be tetra, bromo, and then it's nickel. We look at the charge of the overall complex, it's negatively charged, so we change it to nickelate. And then in brackets we put the in Roman numerals the oxidation state of the nickel. Now this takes a wee bit of working out. Okay. There's four bromide ions. Each bromide ion is one minus. So the bromide ions gives us a four minus. The overall thing is two minus. So the nickel must be in the plus two oxidation state. So There we are, that's the name of that complex. Tetra, bromo, nickelate, and it's all just one word. Okay, try this one. Right, our ligand is a uh, amine. There's six of them. So it'll be hexa. Amine, the double M, 
it's copper. The overall thing's got a positive charge, so we don't change the name, just leave it as copper. And then we work out its oxidation number of the copper. Well, the ammonia is neutral. The overall thing's two plus, so the copper must be plus two. Try this one. A ligand is water, which is aqua. Six of them, so it's hexa, aqua, cobalt. The overall thing's got a positive charge, so we just leave it as cobalt. Work out the oxidation number. Well, the water is neutral. The overall thing is two plus, so that must be mean that the cobalt is plus two. Okay, try that one. Okay, the ligand in this case is the cyano, and there's five of them. So it's penta, cyano, it's cobalt, it's got a negative charge, so we change the name from cobalt to cobaltate. The oxidation number of the cobalt, well each Cn is 1 minus, so that gives us 5 minus. So the cobalt must be plus 2 to give us an overall charge of 3 minus. So cobalt 2 to cobaltate 2. Okay, so this one, we've got two ligands, we name them alphabetical order, so we've got a chloro and an amine, so the amine's going to come first. There's five of them, so it's penta, amine, and then just one chlorine, so that's chloro, that's iron, the overall thing is positive, so we just leave it as iron in the oxidation state. The ammonia is, the amine is neutral. The chlorine is 1 minus, so the iron must be 3 plus. So, okay. And the final one, I think, is this one. Okay, the ligand is the oxalato, there's two of them, so it's di, oxalato, it's iron, the overall thing is negatively charged, so we change it from iron to ferrate. And the oxidation state is, well the oxalato is 2 minus, there's two of them, that's 4 minus, so that Iron must be 3 plus. The oxidation state is 3. Okay. Now, if we just look back at this complex, the tetra bromo nicolate 2, that's, that was the very first example we looked at. Of course, that's a negative ion, and very often it will form a salt by reacting with a positive ion. For example, this salt here. So the overall, sometimes you'll be asked to name the whole compound, not just the transition metal complex ion. So this would be potassium tetrabromonicolate 2. And similarly for this one that we did, the hexaamine copper 2, that's a positive ion. It will combine with a negative ion, for example, with uh, some chloride ions. So the name of this complex would be hexaamine copper 2 chloride. So by now you should be able to use the rules to write the formula and also to name transition metal complexes.